Last Friday, I received an email from the National Association of Bankruptcy Trustees. And in the, the title of that email was, who, who guards the integrity of the bankruptcy system? And of course, the answer was, they do. I beg to differ. I think that we trustees single-handedly are the core of the integrity of the system. Not just a selective case, but every Chapter 7 case that goes through the system. We are the guardians of the integrity of the system. Have the debtors told the truth? Are the, are the facts reported on the petition backed up by documentation? I'm proud to be a trustee, and I'm even prouder to be a member of the National Association of Bankruptcy Trustees. There are three principal reasons that we add to my pride in being in this organization. The first is NAB Talk. That magazine arrives quarterly in my office. It is professionally prepared, looks professional, and the content in that magazine is fabulous. In fact, it's so good that I rarely, I don't think I've ever thrown an issue away, because I know sometime in the future I'm going to need some information from, that, from one past issue or not. And it happened about 10 days ago, or maybe it's the last seven days, when a question came up by a trustee, what can I do about a transfer that happened outside of the four-year statute of limitations? Clearly fraudulent, but beyond the statute of limitations. And the answer for me was a NAPTAP article I'd read years ago about the Federal Debt Recovery Act. And I remembered from that that there was an article and that the statute of limitations was well beyond the four years otherwise available to undo a fraudulent conveyance. So NAP talk is something we can take great pride in. The second thing I, I take great pride in is our serve. There are hundreds of people who participate in that listserv, and probably hundreds more who simply monitor it. The quality of the dialogue on that listserv is amazing. I'm, I, we all have the opportunity to learn from one another, share the wisdom, the things that we've all learned through research, but mostly from hard knocks. That is a valuable resource. The third thing that makes our organization outstanding is our amicus committee. A small cadre of dedicated trustees volunteer their time, on top of everything else they're doing, to stand up for us in appellate courts and at the U.S. Supreme Court. And they stand against the giants of the legal profession, uh, making our voice heard and more often than not making a difference in the outcome of cases. These are just a few of the many things that the NABT does right. But I'm here to, for a position on the board because I think we can do better. I think there's some things we can and should do better. The first is I think that there needs to be a separate list or forum where members of the association can talk internally about policies, where this organization is going, where it should, what it's doing, and that candidates for the board can talk about where their positions are and their visions for the NEBT. Right now, the process we have is a one-page or two-page resume this sort of recites name, rank, and serial number and not much more. I think that's a terrible way to make a decision, and I'd like to see that changed. The second thing is I'd like to consider how we can make our conventions less expensive. In some cases, the ability to attend a convention is not based on desire to be there, but the cost of, it, of attending. I would like to set as a goal that at least one meeting a year arguably the spring conference, we'd find a way to do it less expensively so we can get more people to come. I know that in the past, I had, there's many a spring conference I wanted to attend, and one of two things kept me from being there, either a scheduling commitment where I, or personal family obligations, or very often, I simply didn't have the cash flow to buy a plane ticket and, and hotel rooms in some faraway city. So I'd like to see us try and do better. I think, I, I, I can tell you I am proud with this small cadre of people, the members of this board and the boards that have preceded you have accomplished. I'm amazed at what you've accomplished. But I think that the board and the organization itself can do so much more if it pulls in to board committees, board uh, association members, that could have a huge multiplying effect in terms of our, what we can accomplish. So I'd like to see that happen. I ask, can we, better, can we be better stewards of our members' dues? 
And again, I think the answer is yes. I think that we need more budget transparency. The balance, the profit and loss statement, income and expense statement that, that is handed out at a national conference typically is one page. It has just a top level view, and I don't think that's enough information. I think members are entitled to more information than that. And I think a more complete income and expense statement should be available to members online. And this, how about this? Can't we reach our members a little better? Why can't we do a webinar either once or twice a year that, that, where members can gather online without having to buy a plane ticket in hotel rooms where we can learn from each other? Perhaps a follow-up to some topic covered at the National Convention or some update in case law of, of importance or some legislation. Webinars are relatively inexpensive to do. We clearly have the talent in this organization. If I'm selected to be on the board, I will pledge, and I do pledge to you, that I will get a forum created for internal discussions among, about policy issues and available for candidates to, to talk about where they feel that what's right about the organization, what we can do better. I know that the things that I discussed here today will, could not be accomplished in a year's time. But I will pledge you this, I, I intend to have meaning, meaningful conversations with the board and its members about all these topics and others, all towards the goal of making this a better organization. You know, finally, the reason I, I'm here making this uh, pitch to you is not because I have open time in my schedule, but I'm here because I care about this organization. I want it to be better. I have a vision that it can be better, and for that reason, I'm asking you to select me.